What's going on everybody? Welcome to part six of our robotics with the Raspberry Pi and the Go Pi Go tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we can make this robot autonomous, basically how we can make it move around uh, all on its own without hopefully too much input from us. Uh, it's a little more complex. We'll just write a really simple script here. Uh, our robot won't be very smart and it's highly likely to still run into walls from time to time, uh, but it's better than nothing. So first things first, what we're going to do is I'll come over here, I'll duplicate this, and we're just going to make this tutorial 6.py. And uh, we'll open this up. And what I'm going to go ahead and do, we don't need tkinter anymore. And actually, we won't even need uh, the desktop anymore, since this will be autonomous. And uh, I'll get rid of that. We'll keep servo range. And I'm going to delete basically everything else. <laughs> All the way down, get rid of that. Um, and actually, we may not even, we don't even need server range, server range because we're not going to be pressing keys. So now, uh, to be autonomous, basically we have to kind of consider what, what we need this bot to do. Well, first of all, to, to move around, we need it to be able to avoid objects. Now, we do have a camera on there, but we're going to kind of ignore the camera for now and we're just going to use the distance sensor. So to avoid objects, what we can do is we can just keep pulling this distance sensor and say, you know, how much distance is there? And then if the distance is less than a certain amount, uh, then we might want to turn, or if we can't turn, maybe back up or something like that. Now, since we have the servo, what I'm going to do is if we run at a distance, we'll have it look like left or right. And then if left or right, whichever one, uh, is a viable path, i.e. it has more distance than the minimum amount of distance than we want, we'll go that way and we'll, and if both directions have it, then we can just go in the one that has the most distance, right? So that's the idea. If you don't have a servo, uh, you can just kind of skip the servo part, I suppose, but this was kind of like a requirement of, to have a servo. But one thing you could do is instead of a servo, you could just make the GoPi Go kind of pivot left, look, how much distance, pivot right, how much distance, and then choose that direction based on the pivot. So first of all, we have to decide on a minimum distance. So min underscore distance. And I'm gonna say the min distance will be 70. So that'll be 70 centimeters. Anything less than 70 centimeters, we wanna stop and like think about going in a different direction. Also, uh, sleep we'll say is one. So every time we have a sleep, we'll just have a sleep for one second. We'll see how well that works. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to import time, and then we're also going to need to import, uh, we'll import random just in case uh, both are decent. Also, when we back up, I think we'll add a little bit of a randomness too. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll start with this, and now we're going to create a new function here, and we'll call this function autonomy. And autonomy first... Um, We'll say no underscore problem for now, and we'll say that equals true. Now, what we could do is something like this. Like we'll say, wow, no problem. What do we want to do? So basically what's going to happen is if, if we can't figure out a way out of a situation, we're going to just say problem equals true, and then we might have to exit autonomy. The robot will shut down or something, or it'll let us take over control, something like that. But for now, while no problem, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we're going to grab the distance. So we're going to say dist equals us underscore dist, and then for pin number 15. And then we're going to ask if the distance is greater than the minimum distance, then first let's go ahead and print. Um, we'll print out forward is fine with me. And then we'll say, we'll just, just say the distance, just so we can see it in the console. Then what we'll do is, uh, let's go, we'll just say forward like this. And in fact, probably what we should do since we're messing with the servo is we should always like recenter the servo. So let's do, while no problem, uh, Let's just set it right here. We'll say servo. We haven't enabled the servo yet, but we'll get there. Servo uh, 70 time dot sleep. Mm, not really good. Well, shoot. I guess we'll do. I hate to like always have it sleep 
one second at servo, but uh, that's probably the best idea. <laughs> uh, sleep, and then we'll just have it sleep. So we set the servo to 70, sleep, fine. Distance, good. Uh, if the distance is greater than min distance, forward is fine, moves forward, good. And then again, time.sleep, sleep. And in fact, let's say sleep equals time.sleep one. And then we don't have to keep writing time.sleep. So sleep, sleep, forward, sleep, good. And then else, this means something is in the way. So we'll say print stuff is in the way. And then again, we'll print the dist. And then we're gonna say stop. We wanna stop the whole operation, servo. Uh, that first value is about 28. I'm just calling that 28 because of our original numbers was two times 14, 28. Servo, uh, sleep, and then we'll say to go in the left direction, left dir is gonna be equal to the US distance 15, and then sleep, and then we're set to servo to 112, which is right. And then we'll say, so the right direction, uh, and let's make some space here. So right dir is gonna be equal to uh, US dist 15 again, so we'll check it again, and then sleep. And then we're gonna ask, uh, we wanna know if, like which one's the bigger distance. So then we're gonna say, and so if you don't have a servo, instead of servo 28, maybe you do, a you know row rot left instead of that and then rot right right just keep in mind you would want to rotate right more than you rotated left because when you rotated left you started at center you rotated left and then now you need to rotate all the way back to center and then right but if you don't have a servo that's kind of how you can go around that now we ask if left underscore dir is greater than right underscore dir and left dir is also greater than the min distance, right? Because we need to make sure, just because it's greater, there might still be a wall right in front of us. It's just further away than it is in the right distance. But so if both of those are the case, then we'll print that we uh, choose left. And then we'll go left, we'll sleep. Um, and that's that, else. Uh, or actually we'll make this L if, L if left dir is less than the right dir and the right dir is greater than min distance and uh, lowercase that D, then we would print, uh, we choose right. And then we will literally, we'll just go right, right. Then we'll sleep. And then we're gonna say it else. So this else will basically be triggered if left and right are identical in length, I suppose. But mainly it will be triggered when the largest direction is still less than the minimum distance required. So this will run basically when the wall is just too close, no matter if we turned left or right. So what we're gonna wanna do here is go in reverse. So we would say print, uh, and then we'll just say no good, no good option, reverse. <laughs> okay, now this is gonna be a blind reverse because we don't have a distance sensor on the back, uh, but the reverse, the back side of our robot is, you know, the most durable anyways. The front side has the sensors and the camera, so that's the one we're most worried about, and the servo. The back side just has a battery pack, so who cares about the battery pack, right? <laughs> so, so we'll just reverse, we'll go backwards, and we'll go backward for, we'll just sleep for now. So we'll go backward for that same time. Then when we go backwards, if we just go backwards, we'll probably go backwards until there's enough space forward. Then we'll go forward and then we'll be like, ah, there's no space. It'll look both left and right. It'll be like, ah, it's too low. Go backwards, go forward. It'll just keep going forward and backward. So we need to change something. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say rote choices and then that's gonna be either right rot or left rot. And then the, what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll say the rotation that we choose will be rot 
choices. And then the index value will be random dot ran range between zero and two. So the outcome here would either be a zero or a one. So that will reference this list here, right? This Python list. And if it's a zero, it'll reference the zeroth element. So that would be right rotation. If it's a one, it'll reference the firstth element. So left rotation. Okay, that's just our way of randomly choosing the rotation. And then we will execute the rotation and then we will sleep. Okay, then when we're all done with all of this code, like wow, no problem. So we would be uh, basically two, two indents out. Um, while no problem, we're going to, let's see. If the distance we go forward, cool, we'll sleep else. Let's come down, I guess, yeah, we'll just do two indents for now and then stop and then we'll, it'll restart again, basically. So now coming down to the end of our script, we might end up pushing this stop over one more, but uh, we'll leave it there for now. Now at the base of our script, we're gonna do, um, we'll start off the bot by stopping it <laughs> and then we'll enable the servo and we'll just let the servo stay on, I don't, that'll be fine probably. We'll set it to 70. We're gonna time.sleep, um, let's do two seconds, let's do three seconds just so the start starts kind of slow. Autonomy, and that's it. Autonomy is an infinite loop. Right now we have nothing that says it's a problem, but what you could do is if you back up, every time you go backwards, you could add to a counter or something. And if it backs up and never has enough space to move forward ever again, you can just say problem equals true. And then you're done. <laughs> It'll just shut down or something. So uh, we'll go ahead and save that. And let's try to run that. Right now it's on the little mount, but let's try to run that and see what we what we get at the moment. So you actually, you won't need your, your desktop anymore. We can just come over into our shell and make sure it's active. It is. Um, so now we're going to run tutorial six. So sudo python tutorial tutorial six dot pi. Um, cool. We'll run that. Let's just make sure it works. I see it at least thinking forward is fine with me, uh, but it doesn't want to run forward at the moment. I think probably what's happening is the stop. So let's, yeah, let's cut that, run it really quick. Cause it's, probably moving, we'll, uh, keyboard interrupt. And let me, let's do, okay, so stop, shift over stop one more. So it should be three tabs over. Save that one more time, rerun it. <laughs> we need some sleeps after the servos. Uh, so forward is fine. Uh, let's scroll up here. Let me look real quick. So servo. Oh, we do have sleeps. Okay. I guess it's just angry because it keeps hitting 70. Maybe I probably should disable the servo, but choose left keeps running left. Sleep. Let's see. Left. Let's see. Servo sleep, right? Sleep. Yeah. The, uh, the servo cho choosing like left and right, it's still, it's like not wanting to, uh, to sleep for like the full amount of time. Like if I go and put my hand in front of you, it at least backs up, but then it doesn't want to seem to do anything else. Oh, and then now we just uh, died. <laughs> oh, we called sleep uh, parentheses. Let's fix that. No good option, reverse. It's just too fast. So set the servo to sleep sleep equals time dot sleep one. I don't think it's actually, for some reason, I just don't think it's actually executing the sleep there, but let's go ahead and run this again. Okay, so it resets itself. Looks left and right, apparently. Uh, she's moving forward. Oh, let me get in front of it. Wants to back up. And then it freezes again. Let's see. Did we do another spot where we called sleep and then, uh, yeah, we sure did. 
Let's uh let's do this. Control H, sleep, replace with sleep. Replace all. Save, rerun that again. <laughs> that, that thing is crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um sorry, that's pretty funny. Let's rerun it and then break it and that's just to put it to sleep for a second and so we've got time.sleep3 let's take all of the sleeps copy let's just do sleep and we'll just replace it with time.sleep uh, one replace all and that's kind of a problem <laughs> time.sleep uh, we'll leave the three there and probably at the top will be another one that screws up now, looking through here, time.sleep11111. Good save. Let's rerun this thing again. So it gets that direction, gets the other direction, no good option, reverses, and then goes forward. Although the reverse was really short. That was a pretty good reverse. Okay, so uh, so now we're hopefully working. And at this point, we can unplug it from the micro USB. And let me just go ahead and turn it off real quick. Uh, unplug it from the micro USB, turn on the battery pack, and we can see how well it works. Uh, the only thing I want to change is no good option reverse. Instead of reversing for uh, only one second, I'm going to reverse for two seconds there. And we'll close this out and uh, let's, let's see how it does on the floor. All right, so not the most flawless out of the gate, but except for that first crash, uh, I actually had no other problems. I was pretty surprised how close it actually ends up getting to the wall. Uh, we worked for a 70 centimeter minimum distance, but by the time everything catches up, uh, it'll end up within like an inch of the wall. So that was pretty impressive and just a lucky guess, I suppose, on my behalf, choosing 70. Um, so anyways, that's like the beginning of autonomy. Obviously, that's a really basic script. It's not really that great, uh, but we can, be, you know, we can work on that a little bit as time goes on. Uh, the next thing I want us to go ahead and do is talk about how we can access what the robot sees and actually truly give the robot vision because at the moment the robot doesn't actually really have vision. We have a camera module on there, but that's only really for us. They're, the robot right now has no idea what that information means or what to do with it. So our next step is to start talking about how you actually can handle visual data with your robot because we've done the whole distance sensor and all that and that's pretty cool but being able to work with the, the camera data is really useful so for that there's a module called OpenCV and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial so stay tuned for that.